this is Jesus Catañón, Mr. Josh Cadillac over there for a uh, episode. I don't even know, guys. I'm so fucking tired right now. I don't even know. We're, we're uh, I would say it's either. It was, we just did one right now. Yeah, we might be 13 or 14 now. So you'll see when, when it says the number in the bottom. But um, yeah, today we're going to do something kind of cool. Uh, um, it lets me vent. Uh, on the fact that I, I slept like two hours last night, so I'm, I'm in one of those moods. Uh, and, and Cadillac shows up with uh, with an idea. Um, not only are we wearing the same shirt today, but um, which is pretty interesting, <laughs> the uh, the same exact shirt. The uh, but you you have you have an idea on on pet peeves. So just to get me riled up even more, because actually the reason I didn't sleep last night is because I got really pissed off at a. Uh, it, it was a combination of an email and a text message and a phone call that I. I said I didn't want to take, and I ended up having to take it. So I was so damn pissed off that um, I couldn't sleep. So it's one of those things where, you know, when you're like, you upset yourself that much right before you go to sleep. That's why you gotta. I gotta learn how to not take phone calls after a certain time, man. I always tell myself that, but it's kind of like, it just messes you up, man. You know, you get that pissed off, that emotional before you go to sleep. It's it's one of those things that, uh, that yeah, it, it's not, it's not good for you. So um, in. Uh, in, in honor of that, of not being able to sleep because I was pissed off, a Cadillac like shows up with a list of of things that piss you off about realtors. Yeah, no, it was right? originally going to be uh, called pet peeves, but yeah. I think we said on uh, yeah. things that piss me off in real estate. That, that piss me off in real estate. I just don't think here in Miami people know what peeves is. Pet peeves is, believe it or not. I don't know. Miami, we're, Miami's one of those weird places. Do you know what a pet peeve is? Yeah, yeah. So I just don't. I don't know. I, since I have to live my life in like an English and sp like speaking these both languages and these two different cultures. Because even, so I'm Cuban, right? Born in Cuba, but I came when I was real little. So I'm way more Americanized than the Cuban that, you know, maybe has been here 10 years, 15 years. Sure. That guy speaks perfect English, but might not know what pet peeves is. Yeah. Right? So I, I live in that world. So to me, yeah, I don't know. Don't we run should, the we, risk. We should, we should do sure. <laughs> Don't run the risk. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, what do you got kind of like, let's piss, piss, piss me off a little bit here, bud. All right. You ever get one, you get an offer in or something like that. And you want to call the other agent up to take and go over it with them. So you can present the offer well or whatever. <laughs> and in their email, there is no phone number. There is no signature. It just says send from an iPhone or, or send from an iPhone and maybe bill. Right. You know, like there's no phone number in there. Right. There's no contact information. Yeah. You have the opportunity to take and make an impression on somebody. And what you basically said is, you better be, re you better hope I I check my emails regularly because that's the only way you're getting in contact with me. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, man, that one there, oof, that that one goes. That has a lot of like branches. To, there's sure. a lot of branches in that tree. You know what I mean? Um, look, w when you submit an offer, so first and foremost, th that that would piss me off a lot more if it was a, I guess a a seller's well buyer's market mm -hmm. right so if i'm there just hanging out i haven't gotten an offer and in, in, in three months finally i get one offer and it's from bill with no contact information and i email bill and bill doesn't answer the phone that's when i start getting pissed off right but if i'm in a, I'm in a seller's market and i got like 10 offers I, i'm gonna enjoy uh bill not having any contact information you hey know bill we're I mean? gonna accept your offer bud yeah. but um too bad couldn't get you yeah yeah i'm gonna say just like that but what, what I do see, again, the reason why I talk about these other branches, it's like when you get these offers, um, you, you're looking for an offer. It's one of these markets where like, all right, I get, and then you get an offer in, man, it's all messed up. You got the contracts are filled out incorrectly. There's no contact information. You reply back to the email. The guy doesn't get back to you. There's no information. First of all, there, sh there should not only be your contact information, but if you're submitting an offer, there should be the contact information for the, for the, uh, the realtor, obviously, title company mortgage broker everybody should be copied in that email if you're not doing that then you're pissing me off yeah. you know what i mean like yours is an extreme um which happens a lot but i mean any of those ingredients for me are not there i'm like hey, you're just being unprofessional man now i gotta go hunt down i gotta go hunt you down i gotta go hunt down the mortgage broker i gotta ho go hunt down the title company you it's, know? it's worse than that honestly because i, I give you this one because it, it genuinely is one of mine because <laughs> a lot of times what will happen is i'll get an email from them that'll have a professional email signature. And then all the other emails I get from them. Now we're working a deal together and there's no additional contact information in there. What makes it even funnier is if, if somebody has seen your email signature. Oh. <laughs> uh, so uh, Cadillac's email signature um, is 
So Cadillac has gotten every single real estate designation. Um, it's got in, a lot of them. In, <laughs> interesting. That, that, that's it's yours is the most complete, possibly the most complete <laughs> email signature on the fucking planet. Period. End of story. You know, Cadillac's one of those guys. So um, we were talking about he was he was he was uh, in some city. He has a property and and uh, and he was telling me oh, I was doing some work there with my guys because he has a construction company, which he became a, 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 a contractor, which, by the way, that test is not easy. So then um, he drove over there in a car that since he likes these cars so much, he became an actual certified mechanic. Right. And then you're fixing a house that had an electrical issue. Which you just be, you just finished your test to become an actual electrician, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> so he's was, one of those guys. They're like, yeah. you know, I'm surprised you haven't become a pilot, man. I, I did it actually once. I did the uh, took one. I took a flight and uh, just especially as much as you travel, like around here, close by, jump on your plane, fly over there. You'll probably get your pilot's license pretty damn quick. It, it's something that's it's on the list. Yeah, it's like, on the bucket. List. I'm surprised it's not like top of the list. You it's, know what I mean? It's yeah. there. It's on the list. There's it's just on the list. Uh, so how many, far down that list is it? It's not that far from the top. It's, yeah. It's getting up there. Next yeah. couple of years, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, no, I would imagine so. Sure. Interesting. Yeah. Absolutely. But anyway, yeah. let me let me, let me me kind of circle back to this just because uh, it's – I have two signatures with all, <laughs> with all of my, my, my stuff. I have the initial signature, which is the one you're talking about. It has all of my designations and all this stuff. It's got contact information for me, my office, everything that an agent would need to know. And that's kind of the – Do you have your, your social media stuff on there now? Yeah. No, it's the, I have the links on there and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't use that one except on an initial email. On my initial email, I want you to know, hey, this person that you're dealing with is, oh. is something that's been around the block, you know, so you can rest assured right. that I got this. I, I, I'm not. I'm going to hold up my end of the bargain. Right, right, right. After that, my email signature is pretty simple. It's just me. How do you how do you change from one to the other? Because it's one of the settings in Outlook and also in your. Uh, I did not know that. So you thing. could you could you could you could make the first contact one signature and the other one the rest. Absolutely. Of them. So your your that. replies and all of that are on I've a separate signature. And the reason why you do that is because you don't want to have your somebody to have to scroll down ten pages to take and find your last right. communication. Right. So I have like a little two line one, but what's always in there is my phone number. Because at the end of the day, sometimes an email is not going to communicate what the nuance of what we need to do to get this deal done. I'm a listing agent. I'm working on my seller side. If I want to call you on the buyer side, you want to talk to me because I definitely have the property. You have what you hope is a buyer, but I definitely have the real estate in hand. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, like if I want to talk to you, I'm trying to get your deal done. I'm trying to get your customer a house. Yeah. Help me out and help me be able to get a hold of you. And yeah. when that's not there, and I mean, honestly, agents that have been in the business a long time, and I still have this problem where I have to go through, we'll have 40 emails, and there's one email where they don't even have it in their signature. They put in the body of their email, their phone number. Yeah. I have to go track that down. It takes me 10 minutes that I lose 15 minutes that I lose that I could should be doing something else. Yeah, and I, and I could tell you as as a listing agent and uh you know you know my thing has always been projects, you know, selling, you know, uh uh, uh you know, large bulks of real estate and everything like that. Yeah, I, I've tried to contact realtors and I can and I move on. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um and I could tell you how many times I've heard, "Hey man, you know, Jesus, I'm doing business with you and you got this big deal here because um you know, you're, you're easy to, you're, you're always going to answer the phone and you're always going to be available and you're going to answer the phone no matter what. So, um, yeah, contact information guys, you know, and I tell my realtors, um, brand new realtors, I tell them, Hey, listen, you know what your biggest obstacle is going to be? It's going to be other realtors. Always. I was just talking about Texas cause, um, you know, I did a lot of business in Texas and you know, one of the good things about Texas and the reason why it's such a solid market over there is cause Man, to get your real estate license over there, you really got to try. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it, they put you through the ringer. You got to go through a real course. It ain't that weak, you know, uh, shit that even I could pass. You know, it's a it, it's a it's a real one, man. It's yeah, a, yeah. it's a real, real, real test. And uh, and I, you know, listen, you, you always, you know, it's it's hard for me to say this right now, but I think they should make the real estate test harder. I think I think they should, you know, it would suck because. I would get less agents and everything like that, but I think the quality. I think the, we're ha- we're in real estate. We're having we're experiencing a quality issue, man. It's, well, it's, that's been that's been going on for a long time. It man. is, man. And I think I think you know accepting anybody and everybody. You know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't suggest an intelligence test. I'm sure that's politically incorrect at some point or something like that. But there has to be something done with the quality of realtors that that are coming into this business. I love a good tangent, and so I think this is a really good tangent to go <laughs> on because. Um, I would agree with that to some extent, but really what you're testing for then is somebody's intelligence almost, like their ability to pass the test. Because right. you and I both know 
I don't think there was one question on that test that has actually been helpful Zero. in my real estate business. So you're saying the restructuring of the test is really what I, I would think either restructuring or, you know, like, I mean, what was the part of the, the driving exam that probably was the most relevant? It's when the guy was sitting in the car with you driving around looking at real estate. So I'm not looking at real estate, looking at seeing you drive the, the, the car. That, that makes the most sense. It's the most relevant. I don't know how to make the real estate test relevant. I haven't really thought about it. But realistically, what there needs to be is a more relevant testing of skills because what you could see is you know probably a lot of people that are good at the business that maybe struggle with the test, Yeah. right? But they have the social skills, yeah, the yeah, social yeah, awareness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the test doesn't really tell you. It's doesn't hard, hard situation to fix. Yeah, I got a lot of realtors here that, yeah, you know, I, I don't know how they pass the test, right? <laughs> because they're not really good at, at you know, at the, the troubleshooting and everything like that. But they're really good realtors, man. What yeah. makes a what makes a good realtor? You really take care of your client. You can't take care of your client. And if you don't really know the stuff, but since you have you have a good office that kind of walks you through things anyway and makes sure that you know things are being done right, then then yeah, it, it, you're 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 good. You know, so it's yeah, it's it's a it's probably a problem that'll never be fixed. You know. Um, and, and it's kind of a catch-all industry to some extent, real estate, yeah. in the sense that, you know, like, you didn't make it here, you didn't make it here. Well, here's a place where you you don't have to dig ditches. You can dress kind of nice and go to work. And, hey, it only takes a week to get your license. Yeah. And so that's kind of what it, the position it's fallen to, I think, in Florida to some extent. Yeah. You know, you try this. And I, I, I think it was Zig Ziglar actually said. I don't remember. Maybe I'm, I'm getting this wrong. But it was somebody who – Old Ziggy. Old Zig. You got to love the Zig factor. <laughs> he said that everybody should do sales at some point in their life. It's a very, very good set of skills because realistically, it's the it's the, the art of persuasion and persuading people well. And again, ties back to this. Your phone number's not in there. You're not persuading me to want to work with you. Mm -hmm. And I think it really ties in with the one you kind of hit on. We hit mm -hmm. on it pretty hard the other day, but I think it's worth hitting on again because it's such a problem. Yeah. Is not answering their phones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know what? Well, before I forget, I have one that, man, it's been real prominent in my mind lately because I'm seeing a lot more of it. Okay. And it goes back to the quality of the realtor. I'm about to go into another arbitration, mediation, arbitration, whatever. I forgot the order, but um, realtors. So my realtor puts in, and again, this is the second time I'm having to do this in the last several months. Okay. My realtor puts in an offer, gets accepted. Um, somewhere down the line, the buyer and the listing agent speak. They cancel, buyer cancels the deal, goes directly to the seller, execute a contract. And they screw my agent out of the deal, right? Recurring Stru costs. Oh yeah, I, I I just won one, and uh, I'm now you got the thing is that it, what sucks is you got to wait for it to close, you know. Like I am just dying to call this guy, you know what I mean? But yeah. the, the association tells you you just got to let it close. There's nothing you can do. But yeah, as soon as I as soon as I close, I am gonna tell the guy this is what you did. This is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to win. Okay, and this is what you're going to pay me. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you want to do it the nice way or do you don't? And 99.9% .9 of the time, they don't want to do it the nice way. They think that you're kidding. Yep. They find out really shortly that I'm not kidding. And then they end up having to pay me the whole commission because it is wrong. Procuring cause all day, every day, it's wrong. You don't steal deals from other realtors. And I try to talk to people and I go, guys, all we have, and I've been to these mediations and arbitration with the board of realtors and this and that. And, and I tell them, look, you know, um, I'm a, I'm a lifer in this business. It's all I've ever done, and this is all I'm ever going to do. All we have, okay, so attorneys have the bar, right? We have the, the National Association of Realtors, the local board, the, the, the Florida Association of Realtors. We have a code of ethics. That's what we have, okay? So a lot of people kind of confuse my, my aggressiveness sometimes. I'm a pretty aggressive guy. You know, I fly, uh, you know, I shoot from the hip type of guy and everything like that. But man, I'm as ethical as they come. Right. I, I don't I, I don't break those ethical rules. Um, even in a place like Miami, where it's almost like you gotta gray area stuff a little bit just to survive. I was giving the example, talk about not answering the phone, right? So I get one of my realtors who calls me and says, I have a buyer interested in such and such property. Okay. I can't get in contact with the realtor. I'm calling the realtor. I'm calling the broker's office. I'm sending emails. I'm sending text messages. The listing agent will not answer my phone. My buyer is asking me every day. He's telling me he wants this property. He wants this property. He wants this property. So here's the fucked up thing about Miami, right? So now I have to kind of act unethically mm -hmm. in order to combat that 
unethical because at the end of the day, the way I look at it is the way I answer the questions. Like, you know, I, I know people that are you know, very religious. What would Jesus do? Yeah, yeah. Right. Like what would Jesus do? So I always say, all right, well, what's good for the client? Of course, that's that's the rule. I don't even have to call the legal hotline. I'm telling you guys, you want to save yourself a lot of headache and calling legal hotline, calling attorneys. What's good for the client? OK, so is this real affecting the client by Absolutely. not answering the phone? This client wants that house. This house is right next to the school, right next to his mother in law or far away from his mother in law. It's close to work. It'll make his life better. Uh, we were just talking about the pursuit of happiness, the constitutional Absolutely. right. It is the, his constitutional right and the pursuit of happiness to get this house. And I got this moron that doesn't answer the phone. Period. End of story. He doesn't answer emails, text messages, nothing like that. So now I have to act unethically to protect my client. And I gotta tell my I gotta tell my realtor to knock on the door, right? And and deal directly with the seller. Nine ninety nine point nine nine. You know what? Ten percent. Ten out of ten out of ten times, the seller is like, "Really? Are you serious? Either you can't get in contact with them. They'll call. The guy will answer." And then you force that offer down their throat. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? What I'll usually get is the realtor call me pissed off. Right? How dare you? They'll call the realtor. Right? I'll tell the realtor as soon as he calls you, because I already know it's coming. Tell him to call me. How can you do that? I'm like, dude, what do you want me to do, man? What do you want me to do? Oh, you're being unethical. I'm being unethical. Why don't we do this? Why don't we go to the board? Why don't we go to FRAC? Why don't we go wherever the hell you want to go? And let's see who's being unethical, man. If you're not answering the phone, you... How do you know what my offer is? Maybe my offer is a million dollars over market or over market value, right? And you're costing your your seller money, right? How do you know that? And you're not you just disappear from the planet. Don't answer the phone. Don't re, don't return phone calls, voicemails, anything. No, dude, you're being unethical. So that's that's the stuff that pisses me off, man. When these realtors, the crap that's in this business, forces you to kind of stoop Skirt to the their, rules. you got to stoop to their level just to. To get things done and that's what sucks that's the part that pisses me off because i am again if you know me you know you could very easily confuse me for somebody who kind of you know cuts corners break rules you know that's because that, i'm as aggressive as i am and again fly off the uh what the, off the cuff guy or whatever yeah. but no man i'm not i, I do things 100 perfect um as far as as the law is concerned i don't break any of those rules um the most i'll do is like again match one thing with the other because there is no other solution. You you call, try to call the association and tell them that nobody, the guy's not answering the phone. What are you going to do? There's no solution for it. Right. There's nothing you can do for it. What right. are you going to do? A complaint? It's... What? How are you going to prove the guy doesn't answer the phone? The yeah. guy will start answering the phone all of a sudden. You know what I mean? So it's one of those things. That that really, really pisses me off. No, me I mean, having it's... to stoop to their level pisses and, me off. And it screws the customers. I mean, yes. at the end of the day, the opinion that people have of realtors in this country, and especially in this state, is not good. Yeah. And it's agents like that, that that make it that way. Yeah. And so, you know, people need to take seriously, especially if there's agents out there that are listening. You'll become a much better agent, I think, when you start taking the real gravity of what you're doing for your customer, the amount of trust that your customer should be able to place in you doing the business. And if you're not taking that seriously, if you're not internalizing that and say, hey, look, I got to perform for them. You know, this is a big deal to them, for them, and that that matters. If it was a big deal for me, when I go to a doctor for surgery, yeah, how do I, I want that doctor to take it seriously? Not, I want him to make sure that he's been like, I don't know, reading his medical journal updates, so he's using the latest techniques, right? Yeah. You know, I don't want somebody that's just, uh, oh, it's I gotta go to work and do surgery. Let me, uh, you know, <laughs> put down the bottle of scotch. You, you know what I've noticed? Um, we could almost call this podcast you know, lack of communication. Right? I mean, because if you really think about it, everything that has pissed us off so far has been something to do with communication. Oh, no, the next one's a little different. Okay, go ahead. The next one's a little different. <laughs> the next one actually is me communicating with them and them not paying any attention. And what it's I still mean communication. by that, not reading the <laughs> listing. I take and I do a listing. Oh, okay. I put the listing together. I put all the information they need. They take and interrupt my life to take and break my chops about something that is already there. The information is there for them. Um, and I mean, look, if it happened every once in a while, I don't care. If it's a new agent, I don't care. I'm happy to take and help. It's when a veteran agent, and it's been doing this for a year, two years is calling me up and saying, hey, how do I, uh, uh, how, how do we access the property? Um, how, what's the, uh, what's the condition of the, uh, of the property? What's, you know, they're asking me questions that have already been explained. And I, I don't, I don't understand it. I mean, it's, it's genuinely disrespectful. Yeah, my, they just assume that I have nothing better to do. Well, and it goes back to like our podcast that we did on submitting an offer. You know, 
they're, the way of the listing agent to communicate with potential realtors that are coming up is through that listing, through that actual listing form. It says, don't call me, text me, don't text me, call me, you know, that, that type of stuff. And again, um, let me rephrase, don't answer the phone. Okay. Because let's be clear on that. I'm okay with somebody not answering the phone. I'm, I'm not okay with somebody not communicating at all. What, what that means is if I call somebody and they say, Hey, send, hey just te let's text. I'm okay with that. Yeah. Hey, um, you know, uh, send me an email. It's just disappearing and lack of communication. So, Ghosting. right. What, what, what I, what I, what I don't mind is, yeah, just let's communicate through text. Let's communicate through, you know, I get a lot here because, you know, the amount of South Americans that we have for whatever reason, WhatsApp became like the actual text message. Um, so, you know, it, 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 but, you know, lack of communication, period. You know what I mean? So, yeah, these listing agents, they communicate with you. Hey, this is the way I want to be communicated with. This is the addendums that I want when you submit that offer. Best way to screw up a deal is don't pay attention to that stuff. So, you know, and again, you're the, you're usually you know, a listing agent. So of course it pisses you off when you specifically wrote down all the instructions and the way you want things done and they can't even do that. And then when they call you and then you're a little bit pissed off, like, man, I, I have it there. I'm sure you referenced the oh, listing. Yeah. Hey, did you read the listing? And they're like, Oh no, I didn't. But you know, and no, do that. The reason why I wrote it is because of that. Cause I'm busy. I got things going on. I'm answering your phone cause I answer phones, but let's follow the directions. I always answer my phone. That's yeah. always, that's a commitment I made to my customers yeah. a long time ago. It's a commitment to my business and how I run my business. But when I get a phone call at 1030 at night and I answer my phone, because again, that's a, and it's a stupid question. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm a grumpy panda. Yeah. It's just all there is to it. It's, uh, you know, and, and especially, you know what, if you're going to call me up that late at night and ask me a question, the first words out of your mouth should be, Hey, I know it's late. I'm sorry for calling you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you just launch into your question, honestly, if you're that self-absorbed, yeah. Oh, I, you know, like, cause a lot of times when, when I get that, it's like, do you know what time it is right now? Oh no, I didn't look. Uh, it's one thirty in the morning. Oh yeah. gee. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so yeah, I mean, yeah, that's or you get the seven a.m. callers and everything like that, which, 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 I, look, I'm, I'm, I'm up. <laughs> I'm up. <laughs> I'm operating, but I, it's almost like I operate through email and text until that time because I usually sit down, get my coffee, you know, turn on the TV, put some like you know, like Joe Rogan something or you know, some some type of podcast or anything like that and i'm listening and then i'm going through my emails i'm going through my text messages. i don't want to talk to anybody that early like talk talk is different you yeah. know what i mean and just like talking late also sucks i usually got my kids in the room you know and they're watching tv and everything and i'm chilling you know i'm, I'm okay to text right but so that, that's that's another thing you know i think after a certain time you send a text you send hey can you talk sorry it's late you know so that that'll piss me off too you know what i mean so um i think that i think texting but, but again, it's like everything else, man. There's people that are talking people. There's people that are text people. There's people that are voicemail people. There's people that are, I know people that communicate through Facebook and through sure. Instagram and through, you know, so every, everybody's different. You got to figure out what, what, how everybody likes to communicate. Absolutely. You know I mean? But again, what, and again, that, that's actually a really good point that you make. You're actually, you're thinking about the other person. Yeah. And that's really what it is. Like I consider, hey, there's another person involved in this transaction. I wonder what their preference is. Let me see if I can figure that out and communicate in that way yeah. so that I am being a good salesperson myself. Yeah. I am being as compelling as I can be to this person to say, hey, this person, you know, goes out of their way to take and do things yeah. in a good, the best possible way. Yeah. Uh, you know, all of these things, they're little things, but they all help you to be perceived more professionally within the field. Yeah. And for people to want to work with you in general. Yeah. yeah. Right? And so maybe like, let's, let's say that this podcast is kind of us in, in good faith saying, hey, maybe you didn't realize how much this pisses people off. But maybe I, don't, I, don't honestly, I don't. I honestly don't think we're gonna fix anything with this. Podcast. <laughs> no, no, no. This is maybe just us venting. I really, sincerely think we ain't fixing shit with this. I think people are gonna be who they are. I think they can care less. I think, um, you know, you're that cynical. I mean, good. I, I've been I've been doing this a long time, man. It's good to know that there's somebody else as cynical as me that we can hang out. I've been. Out I've had conversations <laughs> with these people. Like, hey, why don't you pick the fuck? You know, they they don't they don't get it. I think you're that. If if you if you can't realize on your own that not picking up the phone is wrong, unprofessional, unethical, it's just wrong in any kind of way when you're in a business and you don't answer the phone, it's also probably illegal in some kind of way because if, if you're not answering the phone to these listing agents, then you're not probably not presenting offers that you should be presenting. That's and true. that's where it gets and that's where that's where it gets tricky, man. You know what I mean? If I have this offer, I'm on the buyer side, I have this offer that you're supposed to submit and you're not available to do, to do so, 
you're affecting my client, you're affecting your client, you're affecting everybody. So, absolutely. you know, you know, it's just that I'm not one of those, you know, set complaints. I just, I just go to the board and I go to the realtor association when somebody's just trying to jack my commission or my agent's commission and really, um, not really mine, but you know, it's, it's, uh, yeah, whatever. You got another one? I got, I got a couple more. Right. This one is very similar to the last one. So I'm just going to say it. We're not really have to go expound on it, but calling for showing instructions when it's clearly yeah. in there, what yeah. you're supposed to do. Yeah. Here's one. Big one, because this one directly affects customers. No call, no show on Ooh. showing appointments. Oof. Yeah. I mean, now you're not just in convenience in the other agent. The other agent is getting, the listing agent is getting paid to deal with your nonsense and your problems. But now you're doing this something that directly affects somebody that is not in the business, not in the industry. Yeah. This is the consumer, and you're causing them harm. Yeah. Uh, you know, it goes back to professionalism in reality. Uh, you know, if... And again, it goes, I'm going to say the same thing I said. If, if you're the type of person that doesn't realize that is okay. Look, I, had a, I have a very good friend. I have a very good friend. I'm not going to say his name. He's pretty, pretty uh, high-profile guy. Very good friend of mine. We've done a ton of business together. Dude, this guy, like I would, t I would have to tell him the wrong time to meetings just so he could show up a little bit late. Mm. So one of those guys, we we... You know, and I used to get real pissed off at it, man. I used to be like, dude, what the, you know, what the, I'm here. You're wasting my time. You know, it wasn't till, I wonder if I could say this without um, kind of saying who he is. Well, there was a meeting. Let's say, hypothetically speaking, it was with a president of a, of a country. Right. And, um, you know, I tell him, hey, man, I give him the wrong time. I give him an hour, an hour off. I told him he has to be ready at eight, but he really had to be ready at nine type of stuff. I get there. He still, I, I had the keys to his house. So, um, actually his maid, uh, would open the door. Um, and I had the keys, but technically whatever, cause we always had the same situation. So I'm banging on his door, you know, banging on his door. We had a, a, a boat outside his house. So yes, yeah, so it was on the, it was on the ocean. Um, from the boat, we had to go to the airport, then take a plane to uh to another island etc cetera, etc cetera. um long story short you know i get i get out you know he gets out i'm banging on the door and he gets and he's like he's like bro what are you why are you banging on my door i'm like dude wait a second you're pissed off at me you're an hour fucking late to this meeting we got the president of a country waiting for us and you're upset at me so the reason why i had to say this whole story because i realized that he just didn't get it <laughs> yeah <laughs> I realized that it's like a, it's either a genetic because his dad was kind of the same, right? Uh, it's either he was raised that way, but he really didn't see. He would always be really apologetic when he would get there an hour late. You know, he would always call you after. Last time, it was six months ago, we had a meeting at one at a restaurant. He called me, hey, I'm going to be 30 minutes late. Okay, no problem. Hey, I'm going to be an hour late. Okay, no problem. I'm already, I already know where this goes. I'm like, you know what, dude, let me get my meal. I order the meal. By the time I go, whatever, he's like, dude, I'm not going to be able to make it again. Very good friend of mine means absolutely no harm. He apologized like 30 times after. But there's people that are like that. You know, there's people that are that are absolutely like that. They're not going to change. But at the end of the day, that's not my fucking problem. If you're like that, that guy is different. He's my friend. I've dealt with it. I, I, I've, I've agreed to deal with him. OK, because I like him that much. But at the end of the day, guys, it's disrespectful to show up disrespectful to show up even a minute late what's that military saying if you're not 15 minutes early oh, then you're late. late yeah that's the way i look at it that's the way i look at it. i like to be early to places it's it's the way i was raised it's the way i was raised in the business it's the way i realized that this business is to be successful in this business you can't be the guy who's late because this particular gentleman that i'm mentioning doesn't really need the money right yeah Hey, when I started in this business, you know, and still now, I mean, I, I can't just blow off meetings. Who, who, who the hell am I to blow off? Who the hell am I to show up? How disrespectful is it to show up 30 minutes late to a meeting? I mean, okay. if I, if I, if that ever happens to me, I'm apologizing the whole 30 minutes that I'm late telling him, dude, I'm sorry. This happened. I get there and I apologize. If we're at dinner and it's a dinner thing, I'm paying for it. And I'm apologetic because I don't want that to be my, um, a, I always pick up the phone. B, I'm always on time. Yep. Okay. And uh if 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 things are going to change, I'm gonna have amp I'm gonna give you ample time. Okay. So yeah, those are the things, man. Being late, not answering the phones. Again, it's, it's all really communication at the end of the day. I, I tell you what, 
I don't care what how many things you're going to put on that list. They're all going to end up being a communication thing sure. or that could be fixed through communication. Because even that being late thing, if you're late and you communicate, I, I'm, I'm going to have a meeting with you and I know I'm going to be late. I'm, I'm, te- I'm letting you know an hour before. Right. Hey, I think I'm, I think, you know how many times I've said, I think I'm going to be late and I end up being on time anyway. Yeah. yeah. But I'm okay. Cause I can't consciously just be late and be okay with it. I just can't. It's not me. Because you, know? you, you but you, at the end of the day, you know, you have your schedule, you know how hard it is that you work to be on time and on schedule. Right. And so like, when people make you wait, you know how much it bothers you. You don't want to do that to someone else. Yeah, it's empathy. It's really. Yeah, I just it, realized we have one of those late guys here in, in the. Uh, <laughs> he's listening to us. We got Leo here, our producer here. He, the son of a bitch is always late. I just realized. <laughs> he's wow. uh, he's consistently inconsistent. Leo, why don't you come here, bro? Why don't you tell us? <laughs> you know, come here. Wait, wait, wait a second. I was wondering why he wasn't making eye what contact is- on this one. <laughs> Leo, so tell me. So so when you know that you have a meeting at one o'clock. Let's say, or, or like our, our, our stuff at 12 and you are half an hour late. How does it make, and I'm, I'm, please answer honestly. Like, does it make you, do you get nervous? Like shit, I'm, I'm a little bit late. Or are you like my buddy who just, it's, it's just, it doesn't really matter. He's not, he's not conscious of what he's doing or yeah, conscious. you're conscious of it. So, so what happens? So today you were 30 minutes late. All right. But, but I already knew because I already know how to deal with people with, with, uh, with, with this issue, right? LS, late syndrome. <laughs> the late syndrome that I, I have a, I've built in a buffer. So you're not really late. Cause I'm okay with one o'clock. So you, you know, we started 12. So what, so what is it? Like how, how is it that you're late? So what happens? Why were you late today? Just, oh, just out of curiosity. Time management. Ta- time management. So what you wake up later. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if you knew you had to be here at 12, what time did you put the alarm on? Not alarm, and I say alarm, and you're wondering, is because he edits stuff late. So he's like one of these guys that that has like he's like a like a what, what do you call those animals that that sleep? Nocturnal. He's a nocturnal animal. Okay, so so you put the alarm at eleven, which is that that's really the problem right there, I think, because I I always put the the alarm if I have to be somewhere at at in the morning, if I have to be at nine. I'll put the alarm at seven. I'll put it two. I always put two hours. Give me time to wake up, drink my coffee, do what I got to do. Contemplate you know, life. Contemplate, Wonder, go through my emails. Right now, yeah, yeah, go through my emails, the whole situation. So you don't think maybe if you put the alarm a half an hour earlier, it would probably be the solution for it? Right. What percentage of, of, of meetings are you late to? 30 or 40% of them. Okay. Right. Do you think there's a, there you could fix that one day? Do you think so? Just time management? I was really? Yeah, I was like 3%. Oh, <laughs> so you're working. You're, you're, you're working your way down? LS recovery. LS recovery. <laughs> you know that the first step to recovery is admitting that you have a problem. And I think we just did that. We just did that right now. Yeah, no, we, we, we kind of didn't give him a choice on that. But do either. you realize that it's disrespectful to the other person? Of course. You do. Okay, so. My dad Your dad used to tell you that. Because your brother's actually really good with it. And you guys were raised in the same place. My dad is really good with it. Right. So you think it's a, it can't be a genetic thing then? No. No. It's, because your brother's really good with on time. He's never, I mean, he says he's going to be on time. He's, he's on time. But I'm right. more arrogant than You're a little bit more, right. Right, right, right. Yeah, because it is arrogance at the yeah. end of the day. It really is. It's, it, it, it's, it's, more, it's more self-absorption yeah. a little bit. And it's Always. being about yourself and not thinking, not thinking as much about the other person as you think about yourself. It, it, it's really, it, you know, like, I have an extra 15 <laughs> minutes of sleep, man. I mean, look, in the morning, I right. debated with my, especially when I don't have an appointment or anything like that. I know I'm supposed to be at work because yeah. like, like I set my own like you need to be here at this time yeah. kind of thing. Ah, oh, yeah, but I mean this bed feels really good right now. And honestly, look, yesterday, I, like I said, I, I didn't really sleep that well because I got really, really pissed off. But it's also because I had to put an alarm on, right? So mm. I've been living for years not really having to put an alarm on, yeah. right? Like that's part of like my, you know, I, I guess my success. Like I. I don't have to put an alarm on, right? If I had to put an alarm on, it stresses me out more. And then I, and then it makes me sleep, like thinking, what time is it? What time is it? What yep. time is it? Versus let me just go to sleep and wake up when I wake up. You know what I mean? So, um, because yeah, even two hours stresses me out, right? Yeah. Like, all right, I have enough time. What time? And then I, I got to be there. And then it, really, I had to be here at 10 for a meeting, but I like to get here a little bit earlier to prepare. So is an hour and 45 minutes enough and all that shit stresses me out. So you're saying that that shit doesn't stress you out at all. So when you say, I got an hour, right? So you got to wake up. You got to take a shit. You got to shower. You got to shave, right? You got to do all of those things and commute to the goddamn location in an hour. That's unrealistic. 
You've never fucking done it in an hour. <laughs> You've never been here on time. Not once. Dude, where's your brother? Call that son of a bitch in here. There's no way. You've never been on time. And it's, again, I realized, listen, I'm telling you, dude, I with my buddy, I stopped being angry at people that with, with, the, with the LS syndrome, right? With the, with the late syndrome. Because I really get it. I used to get furious at him, man. I told him, oh, fuck. I wanted the one time he made me go. I told him, dude, I'm busy. Dude, you better show up, man. I'm telling you, I got a lot of things going on. He didn't show up. I called him. I, we, I ended my friendship with him that day. I was never going to talk to him again. Man, I just realized, I don't think he can control it. You know what I'm saying? I think you're either born with that or you're not born with that. I'm going to be honest. I don't think you're ever going to fix it. I, I really don't think so. I think if you're either born with that switch or you're not, it would have to really affect you. You would have to lose a huge deal one day and then you realize that just because you're late you lost this opportunity and it has to be some kind of like crazy wake up call or something like that i don't think i don't think that you're automatically gonna wake up one day and go you know what i'm gonna instead of doing an hour i'm gonna do an hour and a half because do having a one hour to get here in the morning get up get ready do everything you got to do and then there's no way it would it would drive me crazy you know there was uh when i when i was a kid um I, my first job i had to be there at uh at 5 45 every morning and so uh, I like sleep, and I'm not a morning person. So this is the perfect job for me, as you can imagine. Yeah. And so I was, I was getting up 30 minutes before I had to be there. I was out the door in 15, and I was there in 15. Yeah. I was on time every yeah. day. Yeah. But, man, you know, every, all my stuff. Because, like, I'd rather get prepared the night before and have all my stuff laid out and, like, rather, and get to sleep an extra few minutes than have to do more in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know if you're like me, but like for me, when I have to teach a big class or something like that, the next day and it's an early class and I know I need to be awake and I need to be all there, I have the alarm set. It does stress me out to the point where like I wake up before the alarm. I'm like, oh, I have another 45 minutes. But yeah, I wake snoozing up stresses me out. Yeah, and like I can't do that. You, but you're, are you a snoozer? Right. So, so is it realistic to say even with that tight one hour window, of including you, you'll snooze once, right? Right, right. So you're not really getting up, right? So you're you're working with a 45 minute window to get up, get ready, pick, pack up all your shit because you got to pack up a bunch of stuff. Yeah, he's he's like me. You got to do it the night before. Okay. If you're, if you're not, if you're all right, look at that. Person. Yeah, that's pretty responsible. Yeah, you're, right more, you're more of a morning person than, than than. I am, dude. My first job, um, actually my second job. My first job, I got fired in. My first job, I got fired in. Uh, man 24 hours um i get there the guy the manager screams at me um i i then go to the back room i catch him in the back room and i say not very nice things to him for screaming at me and i was fired on the spot but my second job was a golf course maintenance at what's now the trump resort um it was a doral country club um Back then, and it, I had to be there at 6.30 in the morning. That was the time we started working. I used to get there 5.45, get the golf cart. I had a routine. This I had this job for like a year. Um, it was right out of high school. I mean, I think I was even almost for pet. I was even finishing high school during that. I used to wake up in the morning, get on my golf cart. I used to drive all the way to the end of the golf course. It would take me 15 minutes to get all the way to the end of the golf course. I would sit under a tree. Coke, I will, actually, I would get on a coconut tree. They, they were low, so I would stand in the golf cart. I would get a coconut tree. I had a knife. I would open up the coconut fresh in the morning. I would light up a joint. <laughs> right? And I would sit there every morning and drink coconut, light up a J. And then you want to hear a funny story. Um, so I had this routine, right? And uh, I'm driving through the golf course one day. And I see like an old man with like, like weird looking old man kind of like not your average everyday old man he was walking i'm like hey man you need a ride and he's like yeah yeah i need a ride i'm like what happened now is that golf cart start working and everything like that i'm like damn dude you, you look familiar and he's like yeah yeah i'm a singer I'm like no way what, what are you saying he's like oh country music dude i ended up being willie nelson <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he takes me. He goes, hey, "What about your previous story? Made you think of Willie Nelson?" <laughs> right. Oh, right, right, right. right. <laughs> well, because I tell you what. So Willie Nelson, I'm 18, right? So w Willie Nelson um, goes, "Hey, you want to go to my uh, my tour bus and smoke a joint?" I'm like, "Fuck yeah, I want to smoke a joint with you, Willie Nelson." Are you kidding me? Uh, you know, I, I really didn't know who he was. I'm not, I, I became a fan of him after. So I get in this tour bus, and man, it is like, like. I can't even imagine how much weed's in that place. I mean, it, it is like, I, he, oh, he was, so it was a tour bus inside the resort, huge, like, thing. 
has to have been several pounds of weed inside the thing, man. We start up, um, and he says, which surprised me, he goes, hey, can you, do you have anybody, <laughs> should I even go there? Whatever. Long story short, he tells me, hey, you, you can invite some friends over. Dude, I invited like two or three friends over. I'm working, by the way. I'm on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the clock. So, all of, man, we spent, you know, hours, uh, hours there, hours just, Man, smoking and hanging out with Willie Nelson and everything like that. Uh, a couple of my friends brought some more, shared it with him, and uh, yeah, that that's my that's my Willie Nelson story there. So, yeah, I don't know how the hell we ended up here, guys, but that went under the heading of weeding at the golf course. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, all yeah, right, where that, are we? That, that Anything else pisses you off? <laughs> that's a tangent right there. Sending offers without calling. Okay. Um, Agent sends in an offer, and then it just. You never hear from them. Nothing. They don't. Don't. I mean, because sometimes, especially with a lot of you get offers now that are a lot of DocuSign offers. Yeah. They don't come through with an attachment. Yeah. And so you know, it looks like a million other emails you get. They easily get deleted or they go to spam. Yeah. I don't get a phone Again, call. Again, kind of like everything that pisses you off is communication, bro. It's largely communicate. Not everything, but it's it's a lot it's, of it. It's there, man. It's everything. I mean, if you just if you put co contact contact information, uh, communication. Me, see, I, I'm leaning more. It seems like communication really, really pisses you off. I'm, I, I've, I've no, I've been noticing. I'm leaning more towards like the ethical stuff. Like that's the stuff that really pisses me off. If we really think of what we're doing is just talking about stuff that pisses us off. I've been more leaning towards that ethical stuff and behavior of realtors. But if you really think about it, see, you're more of a listing agent. That's the stuff that pisses you off. Sure. I'm dealing with a ton of these realtors, and and uh, I'm dealing with their problems. So I got a realtor. Um, that will show up to my office and be like, hey, I can't get in contact with this realtor. Hey, I can't, you know, I can't do this. What do I do? You know, and I, I got to find solutions for them, you know? Yeah. And, and, uh, but again, it's, it's usually, again, it's communication. So at the end of the day, guys, um, you know, communication is key. And if you want to last, you know, in, in this business, if you want to succeed in this business, you, if you can't figure out a way, like, look, I'm not good at contracts, right? But let me rephrase that. I'm, I hate filling out contracts. I'm very good at contracts. But I hate filling them out. So as soon as I made a couple bucks, I hired an assistant to fill out the contracts for me. Right? So if you don't like picking up the phone, Outsourcing. make a couple bucks and have somebody answer the phone for you. So I'm not saying you always got to do it. You know, I tell realtors all the time, this first couple of years in the business, it's going to be the toughest because you got to do everything yourself, every single little thing. Later on, you make a couple bucks, you hire an assistant. Um, there's plenty of, uh, of room for assistance in this business. There's people that are brand new. So it's one of those businesses that you could outsource whatever you don't like doing so that you can better yourself and you could act in a professional way and you can answer the phones and you can do that kind of stuff. You got anything else? Kind of like sure. I got, uh, I got three more, not reading the whole message. You get, you send a text message. That's, no, that's a long me one. though. Or you send a, an email and they respond to the first thing. Oh, and man, on the last kind of like, I'm sorry, uh, bro. I'm sorry, bro. That's me. Yeah. Some, hey, yeah. we got him. I got to get yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I mean, let me, um, dude, there, I, so <laughs> I'm going to tell you what goes through my head when I see a long ass email. So I'm usually either driving or I'm doing something or something's happening. And when I see those long emails or long text messages, I, 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 I start reading it. What I usually do, I don't know why it's, it's a disorder. It has to be just like Leo's late disorder, right? I read the beginning, I skim through the middle, and I read the end. For whatever reason, my brain does that. Yeah, yeah. It just does it. And and uh, it just frustrates me to have to read through it. And let me tell you why. And and I think, now that I'm thinking out loud here, it's because it's usually a long run-on sentence. Oh, if you, yeah. If you separate it into Format like bullet properly. points, my brain captures it more. 100%. If I got to read, and by the way, I'm getting old, which sucks. So my, are you having issues with your, with your, with your eyes? No, not yet. Really? Yeah. We're the same age, right? How old are you? I'm 41. Okay, yeah, so I'm 42, about to turn 43. So we're around there. So, But I just started getting it about six months ago, and it just came from one day to the next. Yeah, so, that's what I hear. So, yeah, I literally wake up one day. I started having headaches. I, I was like, I'm always like the guy who thinks the whole, you know, like, like I'm like, what do you call people that think they're always sick? Oh, um, um, hypochondriac? Hypochondriac, yeah. Yeah, so every time something happens, oh, it's the worst thing. You know, and, and my brain, brain goes in that tumors, direction. Yeah, 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 yeah immediately. <laughs> And then you know, I, I start Googling stuff and, you know, it's, it's the eyes, you know, and then I started realizing. So I also started realizing my arm, you know, I'm, I can't read here anymore. I got to read far away. I got to extend my arm a little bit more. So, yeah, what happens is a lot of times I can't read through that 
right now I just can't. I, my eyes just don't go. I have to like to go through that middle of the paragraph. It becomes very tough for me. So, so, what, so when they're sending you messages, increase the text size is what you're saying. I, I have. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I, that's actually, there's two parts to this because I agree with you that block of text, it's one of the things I teach in my class um, is to take, you can't use the standard formatting you do for like a book. A book is like four, four to six sentences per paragraph. All paragraph, right. I do two sentences, new paragraph, two sets, and I break it up because it's easier on the eyes on a screen to read it. But yeah. then once again, we're talking about the empathy we talked about here. I'm thinking about you, and I'm saying, hey, he's got to read this. Let me make it as easy for him to read. I want him to read the whole thing. Let me facilitate that on my end. And that's kind of what this business is supposed to be. All of us trying to make it easier on each other as opposed to making an appointment with somebody's customer to see a property and then not calling and not showing or taking and writing an email in such a way that it's miserable to get through. And like your eyes are jumping from line to line because it's just a wall of text. Yeah. hundred percent, man. Yeah. 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 So for those of you who, you know, again, I'm obviously my point of view, honestly, I want to read the text messages. I want to read the emails. It's just, it, it's just, I, I start looking at it and it just, it pisses me off that I have to read through a whole long text. And I get these text messages from my agents sometimes and they're just very long and they're in Spanish and I'm driving and my eyes are fucked and you know, all of these things happening at the same time and I'm doing a million things at the same time. So, so yeah, in my defense, if you break it up, like paragraph per paragraph, like you say, it's two sentences, bullet points and everything like that. I'm going to read every single one of them. Keep it concise. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Nice and tight. All right. Last, last. <laughs> yeah, nice and tight. This, the, 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 these first ones, honestly, I would say are, are largely new agent kind of things. Although I know a lot of veteran agents that do the exact same thing. These last two are ones that people that have been in the business more a year than a year or two that don't seem to act like it's part of their business. And one of those is not knowing the market. Agents that have been in the business and you ask them how their market is. It's one of my, honestly, it's huge pet peeve when I teach. Um, it doesn't upset me much because it makes me feel like I have a lot of job security at, when, I'm, when I am teaching. I'll ask agents, how's your market? Oh, great. Why? Tell me about your market. What's going on in your market? What's, what's good about your market? And I get a porky pig. They can't tell me. Yeah. And, and, and to me, that's unacceptable. I mean, you and I sit down, we, we sit in here for a few minutes and we start talking about what's going on with the market. Because you want to know what I think. I want to know what you think. We want to see what we're seeing. We, we, we have an opinion on the market and because we know it's critical to the people that are depending upon us, our customer, and in your case, your agents and people that you work with, right? Yeah. And so when agents don't have an opinion on their market, when they don't know what's going on, forget having an opinion, just knowing what's going on in their market, that's, that's part of your job. I mean, they have to get in their head that it's part of their job and it's something that they need to do. Yeah, and it could be as easy as, as – um if you're working on a particular zip code, you should you should know how many pending sales, how many how many went pending sale in the weekend, how many uh, total properties are for sale in that particular zip code, how many are under contract, how many are are pending sale, how many are closed. You got to know what's happening. You got to know how many have closed in the last ninety days because that's usually what the appraiser is going to do. It's that simple, guys. It's not really that hard to know your market. It's just if you're if you're working on a particular zip code or two. Put the zip code, you put pending sale, you put closed sale, you see what each one of them is, you go how many days back you want to go, and that's it. I mean, you should know that, and that's what you should be sending to clients that are looking. Hey, here's what's closed, here's what's pending, and and and, and you get that idea. Oh, man, you want to take and turn the volume up on that, and, and honestly, it's an easy thing to do because I 100% agree with what you just said. Take and do it countywide. You know why? Because nobody else is doing that. Do it locally, your area, and countywide. You know why? Because now you can have a beautiful conversation with your customer comparing how the county is doing versus your local area. Well, the National Association of Realtors and the local realtors, they do a lot of these stats for you. You could go on the, on the, on the, on the National Association of Realtors and you could see who's buying from where, where are Absolutely. they coming. You could... You could see what literally what country, what price range. You can see everything. So nowadays, you got stats on everything, man. If 100%. you guys don't know the market and you don't know what the hell's going on, the you know, why, the it's reason, a reflection on you. So reason, if you're late, you're not picking up the phone. You don't know the market. Okay? You're sending bullshit offers with no information on them. Right? You can see how those things... I always tell people this business is not that hard. It's really basics, right? You got to be brilliant at the basics. Everything we mentioned, none of this shit is rocket science. Nothing that we've mentioned so far is actually rocket science. It's just being brilliant. Very good friend of mine says that. Very successful business owner. Hey, man, be brilliant at the basics. You answer the phone, basic. Don't be late. Basic. Know your market. 
basic. Submit an offer professional. The way your signature is set up, the way your offer is submitted with a with a, with an with an approval, with the contact information of all parties involved. Basic, like super basic. Fucking do it. If you do all of those things together, they start stacking up. If you do them right, they stack up. They stack you up against the other person who's not doing them, and that's stacking up against them. You do half of them, well, then you're half, right? You do one of them, whatever. Maybe you're maybe you're on time for everything, but you don't know your market. You're sending bullshit offers and everything like that. You see what I'm saying? So if it's basic, just do the basics. And by the way, you're going to see immediate results. 100%. You have to take the business. It's your business. Take it personally. Yeah. And I mean, the reason why I even said countywide the way that I did is because all I need in order to do that is my MLS. Yeah. I just put Miami Dade and I pull the exact same stats. Yeah. I mean, it's not a ton of stats that you need. It's five or six things that you want to just keep your eyeball on. Yeah. You can do it statewide. You can do it for the city. There's, there's a bunch of different ways for you to, I mean, one that I used to do, I told you the cheat code I used to use that got me into so many conversations during the short sale time was how many foreclosures do you think there are in Miami Dade County at the peak? Now, we're in like 2009, 2010. How many foreclosures, active foreclosures? Well, at that point, it was everything. You would think it was. Well, that's right. right. You told me that it wasn't, right? It was like there were 30,000 available, 33,000 available. But there were only 900 uh, foreclosures. Yeah. When I said that, the customer's eyes, really? That's not what I see on TV? Well, mm-hmm. maybe TV isn't telling you the whole story. All of a sudden, then I'm the source of true information. Mm-hmm. I had the data to back it up. It was a huge leg up in my business when I was getting started, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I knew data and I brought it with me. And that brings me to the last guys. And when I started in the business, it was a, you know, I don't want to sound like the old schooler here, but it was literally the black screen, the DOS black screen with the green letters. Oh yeah. There wasn't the information you have now. There's no excuse between RPR and the matrix and all these softwares that you have right now. There's no reason what for you guys. And I have every little bit of information. No, RPR will tell you what the most common dog in the neighborhood is Everything. almost. So what kind of like food they like? Crazy. Yeah. Absolutely. Do they prefer Purina to, uh, <laughs> right. to Imes? Yeah. All right. The last one I'm going I'm to do, and this is very, very specific to me. And again, probably it's because I, I do a lot of the- A lot uh, of things piss the, you off, kind of like. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an easily upset person, I guess. <laughs> the, the, the one that, I, I see this a lot again, because I think because I teach classes, not having an opinion with a great why. Like, I'm going to take and say to my customer, hey, I think you should do this. And when they ask me why, not having a great why to back it up. And that's, again, it's a market knowledge tie-in. It really yeah. ties in with knowing your market. But if a customer came to you and said, hey, look, hey, Seuss, I'm coming to Miami. I'm leaving, uh, you know, whatever York. country. And I'm coming down here. I want to invest. What product do you think I should invest in? You're going to have an answer for them. And then they say, well, what makes you say that? You know that you need to have a great why. That's where you stop. <laughs> and, and a lot of people, when they're dealing with residential customers or the little investors, they don't take the time to think through the why of what they're recommending. So this is more a frustration as a teacher more than anything else. No, it's a frustration that this is the industry that I find myself in. These are the people that are putting themselves forward as real estate experts, their customers. Yeah. And it frustrates me that customers are getting hurt by agents that don't know what the hell they're doing. Yeah. You know, and that it, it, I think it bothers me more because most agents, until I, I have a class with them, they don't even think it's really part of their purview, part of what they're supposed to be doing in being a good agent. Yeah. It's not just having an opinion. It's great to have an opinion. I, one, of the, one of the questions I ask, I say, what would you recommend? Single family, condo, multifamily, or, or commercial space, right? Yeah. Every agent answers the question. I said, hey, guys, good news for you. That was a two-part question. What's the why? Why? Why would you recommend it? Yeah. And then I go around the room and I make them tell me, what do you think? Why, why are you saying that? Because we're not supposed to just be the person that shows houses. We're supposed to be the real estate professional in the room. Yeah. And unless you take that role seriously, this will always be a quasi hobby. Yeah. Something for you to take and throw people in the car to and go look around. And you screw it up for the guys that are not, it's not a hobby. And you also take advantage of customers. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Leo, what are you going to do to change, man? As far as this, <laughs> what are you going to do as far as what can you do to start being on time to places? Forget about me. Just, I, w- I want to give the people that are listening right now, bring it into the mind of somebody who's late. So wh- what are you going to do to make things a little bit better? Well, for starters, you know, be conscious of it, you know, and then, uh, you know, start taking ah, action. You know, fine. yeah, no, no, it's, it's start taking actions. Um, um, well, the first one, like I said, be conscious of it and start taking actions and have better time management. Cause that's that's why I'm, I'm lacking. Um, just time management. No, I mean, I, I think that there's there's a good place for that. Uh, there's 
there's a place for figuring out what you're dealing with. And I mean, I, I think that we both, you know, like, you know how you are. You know, as you get older, you know, start to know more how you are and like what you have to do to, to trick yourself to get out of yourself. See, but I've caught myself giving a shit less about being on time. And I've, and I've brought myself back. Like, I've caught myself saying, you know, eh, you know what, dude, if I'm 15 minutes late, it is what it is, man. You know what I mean? And I catch myself and like, I say to myself, because I'll be late to an agent, a meeting with a, with a with an agent or something like that, that I know that, you know, it's going to be there anyway and everything like that. And I got to catch myself and be like, no, that's fucking arrogant. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't start thinking I'm the man and and that I can be late and that it's OK for me to be late. But they it's not always. OK for that. Yeah. yeah. I, dude, I, it's been a couple of times that I've, I've said, no, 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 no. I can't do that. But see, that's the that. important thing that you just yeah. said. You caught yourself. Yeah. yeah. And I think this is one of the things that you you, you realize is that you're stuck dealing with yourself and you really have to, to stay on top of yourself because it's really easy to fall backwards. And the progress we make with ourselves, showing up on time, you know, doing things the right way all the time, it, it is progress. It's like an uphill climb and it's so easy to slide back down the hill. Yeah. But you have to constantly, you're, you're a mountain climber almost. You have to be perpetually diligent of yourself. I, I say this to people all the time. When you were 20, and you'd say to yourself, say, hey, when you were 15, did you know yourself? You're like, oh, man, when I was 15, I had no clue. What I was but now that I'm 20, I yeah, got it. Right, right, right. And, right? And the funky thing is if I was to say that to you, but hey, but when you were 35, right now, you'd be like, oh, man, when I was 35, Oof, I was. Whole but world. now, now I got it figured out. Yeah, yeah. And the reality of it is five years from now, the same thing is going to be said. What, uh, what is it this. they say? You change like every seven years or something like that? You're like something. I heard something about that. I don't know. Whatever. There's, there's a lot of different things. I mean, most positive change you're going to get in your life is going to be because of diligent effort on your part. It's not going to be yeah. easy. But life, human beings, we are great habit-forming creatures. And so forming the kind of habits to be the kind of person you want to be is what it's all about. Because at the end of the day, you and you and me, we're all stuck with us. And so if we have an us, a version of us that we can get more out of, yeah. that we can, you could always choose to be late. But if you have, the, if you have that built-in habit that I won't be late, now you have options. I can choose to be on time or choose to be late. Yeah, and again, and even the cases where I can be on time because it is what it is, you know, I, I choose I choose not to because because it's not it's it's wrong. I'm I'm disrespecting the other person. I'm realizing, and I can't get I can't get arrogant, and I can't be like, well, I'm the boss and I can be late and everything. Like that. No, that's not right. Because you know what? If they were late for me, I would get pissed off. So, you know, one of the things that my dad always told me, like you know, and and one of the things why. I get, I get that a lot. Oh, cause people respect you, you know, and, 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 you know, it's very rare that somebody will disrespect me at some, at some point, sure. you know? And, and it's cause I, I, I respect everybody. I, I go out of my way. I am never disrespectful. Now you have to be my friend for like a really long time where I, I just, you know, I'm constantly busting your balls and, and constantly messing with you and everything like that. But we've passed that bar barrier, you know, but you know, people respect me because I respect them. And because the second they disrespect me, I call them out right away and I go, listen, relax, not going to happen. Let me tell you, you know, I respect you, you respect me and I remind them. And that's part of it. Being on time is respect. So now don't, and I'm not saying in your case, but I'm saying like just in general, you know, if, if you're disrespecting me on a regular basis, don't get pissed off when I'm disrespecting you. So when we show up to a meeting and, and you know, it's a meeting that's important to you and I'm late, what the fuck are you going to tell me? You know what I'm saying? So it's one of those things that, you know, <laughs> so I, 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 it became a little <laughs> like, fuck, man, these guys are. <laughs> I wonder if he's going to be late next time. I'm going to start calling him out every time he's late. Uh, you know, it, it's it's good to think about other people and it's it's good. I, I, I yeah, Leo. all right. <laughs> uh, but I, you son a, of a bitch. There's a selfish motivation in this in this, too. And it's from that standpoint of. If you have the ability to get out of yourself what you want to, if you have the ability to rise to the occasion, of the occasion, you build that capacity in. It's like being a Navy SEAL. Like if you actually survive all that stuff, and you you could always go back to eating Twinkies on the couch. There's nothing. There's no rule that says you. But you know, you know what you have in the tank. Yeah, and and you well, you'll find out also is that in business, um, I like to do business with people that are similar. They do business the way I I do. I if I think. There's, there's that one friend of mine, you know, maybe one other that now has become arrogant and doesn't pick up the phone and everything. And he doesn't, when he doesn't pick up, I'll fucking call him out on it. You know what I mean? 
hey, you think you're big time now and everything like that. And that's fine because we're friends and everything. But you end up doing business with people like, you know, the reason you and I do business, you know, uh, and, and we get along is because I always answer the phone. You always answer the phone. We respect each other, you know, and 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 uh, and we have similar, um, I guess, business morals. Is that? Yeah. No, we, we, we take it. We take business it, etiquette, I guess yeah, we take it seriously. And, and we 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 come at it the same way. We want to see it done well. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's, I, I think that we don't, both of us don't want to do anything halfway. We want to both yeah. do something great and we do it every day. We, we, we fight the fight against each other again, again, against ourselves yeah, to, yeah, to, yeah. To, to take and make that happen. It's not yeah. easy to get out of bed some days. Yesterday, I told you what I felt like. Yes. I felt like dirt. Dude, yesterday. listen, I, I told you today, man, I slept, I slept two hours. I woke up in the morning, right? Leo. So just so you know, I woke up in the morning and I said, um, Dude, I'm, I'm going to call this shit off because I know I had two sales meetings. So today I've had a sales meeting at from 10 to 11, one from 11 to 12. Then I had two other meetings. So I've been talking nonstop since, yeah, 9.45 a.m. nonstop. I just really have not. I, I ate quick and, and, and that's about it. So when I woke up in the morning, I thought to myself, shit, man, I knew that this was going to be yeah. what my day was, right? So I said, you know what? Let me just tell these guys, bro. Let's move it to tomorrow or everything like that. I didn't, not because of me. I did it because of you guys, because I'm like, well, dude, they've already planned out their day. I'm fucking exhausted. It's my problem, not theirs. You know, I'm not going to inconvenience everybody else because of it. It is what it is. I'm going to barrel through. And look, it's three o'clock. I'm fucking exhausted, but we did it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, embrace we the ripped, suck. We ripped two podcasts. I did two sales meetings for, you know, two hours. And, and we did two podcasts today. So... It is what it is. I'm alive. I, I respected everybody's time. Um, and, uh, and you, did, and, you, did, and we the, did, it. you did the hard thing. That was responsible. Kind of like, all right, man, <laughs> you did, you, I'm a responsible son of a bitch. You are, man. <laughs> you know what? Look, sometimes it's just great to do the hard thing because it needs to get done. I always respected that about my dad. I don't care how hard it was. Yeah. It was never, if it was going to get done, it yeah. had to get done. Yeah. And his generation was great for that. And that's where they accomplished as much as they did. It, it didn't matter. I mean, I think, I think I told you the, the thing with the, um, the guy's name was Chesty Puller. I told you the story. Funny, funny name. Yeah. yeah. And um, he, they they were at the Chosen Reservoir in Korea. They were completely surrounded. They, they actually told them, hey, look, the enemy is on, in front of us and they're behind us. And they flanked us on both sides. And his response uh, was, perfect. They can't get away from us now. <laughs> and so, like, you know, having that, that viewpoint yeah. of this, you know what? You, you had a hard day. We both had a hard day, right? You made it through. Oh, you made it through like a champ, and dude. Being, so and celebrate being, it. And being taught responsibility, I, I was actually I was walking with my. Uh, we've, we've become a little tradition now lately in the weekends where I take a, like a, like a long ass walk with my dad and the kids. Um, and whenever I can pull the wife in, uh, which hates it, but she'll she'll do it every once in a while. We take like a four mile walk through the neighborhood. You know, yeah. uh, I live in a in a you know it's a it's a it's a neighborhood that's nice enough that it, it's it's kind of cool to walk because you see like cool houses and. And a lot of trees and stuff like that. So we take we take this walk, and and we were we, we, and one of these cons, one of these construction we, one of these walks we see a construction site and we see uh like roof trusses. And my dad's like, uh, remember when we uh, built the roof? Because I grew up in a trailer, and my dad, obviously with no permits, um, decided to build <laughs> on top of a flat trailer. He built a V-shaped roof with trusses and everything like that. And I was telling my son, he tells me, "Do you remember doing that roof?" I'm like, "Yeah." I do remember because I remember that I could see from the roof of the trailer, I could see the park that all my friends were playing at. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember hating every second of that roof and building that roof. Cause again, I could literally see everything and what I was missing and everything like that. But it taught me to be the person that I am today and the responsibility yeah. and everything like that. And, 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 uh, and how do how do we turn this into uh, a uh, this is like a life a, a, a life coach uh, a session <laughs> because because you know what Damn dude we, we both we both know this business is hard man yeah this I business guess. is hard to do every single day and all so right. sometimes people need a little pick me up yeah all right that's probably a good place to yeah man all right man yeah let's questions uh, and comments put them in the comments let's see, section let's see how many text messages I got I always like to see how many text messages I got after I finish this let me see not bad forty six all right. <laughs> I'll take it. Last time was like 189, right? 189 text messages. Um, all right, guys. Thank you so much. Uh, we're going to continue to barrel these things out, try to get as much information. If you could comment on our Instagram, mostly. I would 
I would, I think we have Facebook too and everything like that, but really our, our Instagram is really where I want you guys to comment. Just comment on uh, uh, any questions, anything you guys want us to talk about. Um, trust me, it, it'll be, it'll come in handy. Sometimes, you know, we, we run out of things to talk about, or we didn't think about it in time. Like today, I Cadillac gets here and I'm like, Cadillac, what do you want to talk about? He's like, well, I got some stuff written down. I'm like, great. Cause I hadn't thought of <laughs> shit to talk about today. You know what I mean? And then I knew I wanted to talk to Richard. We did that other podcast. I wanted to talk to Richard. I text Richard, Hey, are you available? And we just come up with it pretty much right on the spot sometimes. So yeah, any feedback, any questions you guys might have, uh, let us know, man, it, it, it'll, it'll come in handy. Sometimes man, you might give us one question that we could talk about for an hour. Or so, all right, guys, thank you very much. Comment, uh, go on our YouTube page and like, and anybody, um, guys, if you like our videos, if you like our, our audio, uh, we're on Spotify, we're on Apple, we're on everything. Whatever we're not on, we'll get on. Uh, only thing we're not on is TikTok right now, right? I, I kind of refuse to do that for whatever reason. I, 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 I don't want to, all right? <laughs> if you guys are okay with it, I'm not doing fucking TikTok, okay? But everything else we're on, YouTube, man, send it to as many friends as you can. Um, like it subscribe if you got like five user names at your house subscribe to all of them help us get this thing growing um the more we grow the more material we're gonna get the more cooler interviews we're gonna get so there's a couple things that we're working on right now as far as interviews are concerned so we're definitely listen we're growing we're getting better at it we're we're starting to you know catch our our rhythm and, and get our wings so uh we're only gonna get better with this and the more help from you guys the better so thank you very much